Hi, me again. And again, we're going to be looking at conditional formatting in Excel, but we're going to take it a stage further this time, and we're actually going to build the formula that decides whether the true-false statement is correct. And then, obviously, if it is true, it will apply the formatting. So in the last one, when we did our conditional formatting, we used these highlight cells rules and equals to. Now for this one, what we're going to actually do is we're going to go into here and say new rule and we're going to use a formula and the formula we're going to use here is if that cell there equals Joe. Now you do have to actually put the quotes around it here. Um, that's a common mistake because actually if you're used to using the preset, the built-in, you just type in Joe and you don't need to put the quotes around it. Um, and also you need to say which cell it refers to, which is A8, that cell there. And so I'm going to pick a format and I'm just going to pick uh, just a simple one here. So I'll just say the fill is, uh, let's say that color there. Okay. Okay. Now that condition is true, so that has applied the formatting. And if I choose that cell, go back into the conditional formatting manage rules, you'll actually see it's got the orange background, but it's still got the red text because I'd not deleted those other rules there. So now I've deleted those rules you'll see that it's gone back to the black text. The reason these haven't changed is because I didn't have those cells selected. So I've only actually deleted the rules from those cells. If I go back into one of these and manage rules, you'll see the rules are still there. OK. I'm going to take that a stage further. So I'm going to manage and clear the rules here. And let's take it a stage further, because what we did just there is not exactly what we want. So new rule choose the third one down and it's where that cell but if we want to copy it down we don't want this cell to refer to that one we want it to refer to itself so at the moment we've got that one selected but when we copy it down and I'll show you a quick way of doing that later on when we copy it down we want it to refer to its own cell yeah so what we need to do is make this relative so the quick way of making a, a reference relative is to press F4 until it becomes relative. And now if we type in equals quotes, Joe close quotes, and choose our red format, so let's just choose that, click OK, OK, and there he is, because it is Joe. But now if we copy, and we can copy using the format painter, none of those actually become Joe. But if I change it to Joe, using the Format Painter, I've copied the conditional formatting, which is really, really useful. But let me take that a stage further, because if I go back to that cell there and go back into Manage Rules, you'll see that we've got that one there. That's what we have for Joe. So let's see if we can do it for Bill and Fred as well, which of course we can. So, new rule where that cell, I need to make sure I'm clicked in the right box first of all, F4 three times equals, and this one is going to be Bill. And let me now choose a different one. So let's choose a light yellow. And now we want a third one, so another new rule, which obviously is going to be for Fred. Three times on the F4 equals quotes Fred. And if I put in Freed, it won't work for Fred because that's spelled wrong. So this time we're going to have a light green. Click OK and OK and OK. So now what's going to happen if I use the Format Painter to paste that down, you can see that we have the different colors for each one. And obviously if I change any of these, they pick up their associated colour. So that's actually really useful. The other useful thing about that is if I fill these cells downwards, they actually pick up the conditional formatting 
as well as the data that's in the cell. Okay, now we could take this a stage further again and say what I want to do is I want to apply that formatting across here. But look what happens if I do. So I'm just going to double click on there to apply the formatting. And unfortunately, it's not done what we thought it was going to do. All it's actually done is it's turned all of these effectively into text rather than into numbers. So if I click on there, that used to be down as currency in the number format. Now it's changed it into text because I pasted it across from that one there, which was text initially. So I do want to undo that so they go back to being the number format. What I do want to do instead is I don't want to use the format painter when I'm changing the type of content. What I do want to do is I actually want to build the formula and then apply it across the board. The other thing you'll notice is it didn't actually pick up the background color. Now the reason why is because that cell was referring to itself as a reference. So then the next cell was referring to itself and that one clearly doesn't contain the word Joe. So what we need to do is as we come across, we need to continue to refer back to that cell there and ask is that one Joe then color code it. When I get to here, say, is that one Joe? And then color code it. Now I could do it by incrementing the reference of the cell to the left from each one as I go, but that's actually super complicated. An easy way of doing it is simply to lock the reference of Joe in the A, but not on the eight. So what I'll do is I'll leave eight relative. So as I move across, it moves across they all still refer to Joe. These ones here refer to the name in that row nine. So let's see how we can do that. And again, I'm just gonna build it in this one first of all. And then afterwards, I'll show you how we can actually build it and copy it across. Because this way, when I build it and then paste it, it's unfortunately gonna mess up the formatting here. So first of all, I'll show you this way. Conditional formatting, manage rules. And I'm just gonna change Joe first of all. Now, as we edit the rule, at the moment you'll see it's relative on both. If I press F4 once, it's now locked on both. If I press it again, it's now locked on the eight. So the eight will stay still, but the A will move. That's absolutely not what I want because I do want that eight to move down to nine when I go down to bill, and I want the A to stay still as I move across. So it's the next one I want. I want the A to be locked, the eight to be flexible. Now, I'm just gonna drag that one and use the Format Painter to just paint the format across here and down, and it's worked. So you see it's done exactly what I wanted to do for the first part. But what it hasn't done is it hasn't left the numbers as numbers. Now clearly I could go back in here and reformat it afterwards, but actually that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is I want it to all be done in one go. Now this is the clever thing, and you have to actually watch what you're doing here, because if I click and drag to select, that cell there is my active cell. So whichever one I started selecting from, that is my active cell. Now, the fact that I've got all of these selected, when I build my conditional formatting, it will apply it to all of those cells. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all the rules. And you'll notice now how I can see the active cell, all the rest are grayed out. The active cell, even though it's within the range, that's showing up as white. Now, that's really important. Conditional formatting, new rule, formula, click down here. Now there are keyboard shortcuts to get there, or you could even build yourself a little macro that will actually do it for you and take you straight there. Um, I want to say if that cell there, and this is locked on the A, so I press F4 twice, equals Joe. Format to set is red, 
So let's just choose a pinky red. And OK. Now you'll see it's done the whole row and it's not changed these formatting here because the only thing I changed in my conditional formatting was the background color. I'm going to select all of that again. Yeah? Because actually what it's done is it's applied the Joe setting to all of these. So if I change that one to Joe, that entire row becomes Joe. That's nearly what I want, but not quite. So I'm going to go back into conditional formatting, manage rules, new rule, yada yada yada. I want that cell there, F4 twice, to equal Joe. And again, I've got to make sure I've actually got this saying exactly what it says in here, otherwise it won't be true and therefore it won't pick up the formatting. So I'm now going to say format, give it that pinky color, click OK. And the reason I went into this build box or the, the manager, the rule manager, is now I can say new rule straight away. And the same again, same cell, that's my active cell, that's the one I'm building the formula based upon. A8 equals Bill. Now Bill is going to be yellow and another new rule again exactly the same process so again the same cell. Now don't be tempted to go down here and say well that one's Fred. We must build all of these based upon the active cell. So if that cell there uh, F4 twice equals Fred, the format is going to be green. So we've got our three different colors depending on what's in that cell there, and they're going to be applied across the entire row because the column that they're looking in for the Bill, Fred, or Joe, they are locked. The rows are not, so as it moves down, it's always looking in the name cell to the left. Click OK, and hey presto, it's done exactly what we wanted. If I change the name of one of them, they pick up the corresponding color. OK, the next video I'm going to show you a much simpler way of doing this by simply referring that to another cell which may be a drop down up there so I could actually easily change this and then I could just have one of these highlighted according to whichever one I've got there because generally we don't want everything highlighted in our spreadsheet so that's what we're going to do in the next video I hope that's been useful I'm the Adobe Guy and thank you for listening